Okay, sup shredders, my name is... Well, actually, I've just realized that like I haven't intro to these videos now, so I don't need to tell you what my name is twice. You guys are probably intelligent enough to know from the fact that you're even looking at my... Looking for my channel. Um, so, or maybe you just found it on the sidebar and you want to have a, have a, have a look at this. But uh, today, I think it'd be good to have a look at Pokemon Sword and Shield. Because I personally... I, I can't decide... Whether I actually want to buy this game or not. If we uh, Firefox it. There is some pretty crazy stuff going on with Pokemon Sword and Shield that I haven't seen uh, throughout a lot of the other Pokemon games over the last 20 years. Because I'm 28 and I've played every single mainline Pokemon game since Pokemon Red and Blue. And for me... It's one of the most bittersweet times as a Pokemon fan because while I really want to buy this game, the crap show surrounding everything that's occurred uh, with Sword and Shield has made me just feel incredibly... I just don't know what to do. Most of the other Pokemon mainline games have been relatively positive. Like the main generational shift ones, like, you know, the first Gen 1 game, Gen 2 game, and up to 7. Sun and Moon was a great game. I really enjoyed playing that. And those those games were all on the Nintendo uh, handheld systems. Like the Nintendo, the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS. Nintendo 3DS, you know, and and they those games for the most part were incredibly, incredibly enjoyable. As a, as a, as a child, I felt challenged by them. Not just it wasn't just pleasure, it was like the challenge of picking a great team and figuring it all out and trying to do all that stuff. And I think that there is definitely a chance that I could ha find pleasure. In some of these, in some of these, um, in, in either of these games. But whether I find it to be a game that I will actually really enjoy, like be challenged by, be engaged in, I don't know. I tried Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and I was bored by Vermilion City because it was too easy for me. And I'm not like a Pokemon pro or anything like that. I don't do any of that breeding stuff. I don't know anything really about the, uh, the natures. Uh, but they, have, they haven't even got um, the difficulty with the natures anymore. Um, it's like, like herbs. I've still got a cold, so apologies. Yeah, so natures aren't even that difficult anymore. Um, there's, there's herbs that you can buy now. So you don't even need to worry about getting the right nature. You can just choose a Pokemon and just change it to make it how you want. You know, you, you don't have to worry. Competitive is easy now. The only thing that matters in competitive, it's, it's just choosing the right Pokemon. I guess that simplifies competitive, but part of what made competitive more interesting was that people could do that. They could spend that amount of time looking for the right uh, nature and I guess for sh if you're shiny hunting like for special uh, natures this is just a whole lot better which I respect because getting the chances of getting a shiny and then having to get the right nature are just abominably abominably or ridiculously tiny but it's just oh I don't know I just don't feel like I'm going to be challenged by this game and I I I I I I I think that the last game that challenged me was 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 Sun and Moon. And not because the battles were especially difficult, but it was because just the game was designed in a way that was so full of content. You you just you just you know, there were just bits that weren't battles that were challenging, like understanding the plot line sometimes was challenging, keeping up with everything. There was just so much I, I don't, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm tripping and I'm thinking about X and Y. But like, it just, from what I understand, this game doesn't 
have as much of the content like it, it feels unfinished to a lot of people apparently this game doesn't have post game content apart from collecting pokemon like after you finish the game whereas it whereas whereas sun and moon you had to find all the different legendaries and stuff like that and you you had like i'm pretty sure you had post game what is the post game stuff oh okay so it's not great but there is stuff to do still it's like you had the Ultra Beasts, and the Krosma, and Cosmog, and Null, the Tapu Pokemon, the Battle Tree, Battle Royale, Festival Plaza, EV Training. You can re-challenge trainers, you can fill out the Pokédex, and there weren't limits on the amount of Pokemon available. You could catch your 800 Pokemon as well, so you had twice the Pokédex of, of, of Sword and Shield. Um, so there was, there was stuff to do post game in Sun and Moon and, and I didn't get through it all because it was too much. The highest I've ever gotten in a Pokédex is like 250 or something like that. These are the controversies that are making me sort of, just to recap the controversies, you've got no national decks in Pokémon Sword and Shield. They, they basically Game Freak have said that the whole catch em all thing that was in previous generations is just not there anyway. No Mega Evolutions. What was the point of Mega Evolutions? Um, Z moves. No, of course not. Why, why would they do that? Why would you not continue to add cool features that worked in the past really well and made battle really interesting? The Game Freak lied one. Yeah. Okay, this is this is what this is what the Game Freak lied thing is about. It says when Game Freak first announced that the National Dex would not be returning, the company had promised to improve animations as a result since the company would have more time to devote to each Pokemon with their numbers cut dramatically. Fans also criticized, also criticized late cutscenes and clips, suggesting that the creative quality was poor, and whatever was being expected from the game's arrival on Nintendo Switch was being delivered upon. Yeah, so... If we just quickly summarize... No national decks, which defeats the purpose of a Pokemon game, to be honest, because you can't catch them all, can you? Um, they cut... They didn't cut a lot. They cut a few features. Um, it, they're disappointing. It feels like such a shame for like the big original Switch release to not have Mega Evolutions or Z moves. And they just lied. They just were. They just. They just lied. They just. They didn't need to do that. They didn't need to lie about this. They didn't need to lie about the animations. They could have just been honest about it. They said we don't want it, but they had to. Bull, yeah, they had to BS people. I, I think this is the one that's most... This is the one that's most offensive to me. Because it's just so stupid. This Game Freak Lied thing is just so stupid. They underestimated the tenacity and creativity and intelligence of the people that would try and verify their claims. It's just poor. I don't think it's... I, that's kind of... They're not treating you well. Like, if someone lies to you, do you want to support them? Because I don't think it's worth supporting someone who lies to you. If we remove all the apologist, Oh, it's just a... They're just trying to change things up, you know. It's just as look at the Mega, the 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 big Pokemon. It's like at the core of it, they lied, and it's important to not support people who lie to you. That's a really important distinction that I think a lot of people have missed with this, who have been unhappy. But have still played the game. If you buy the game, you're supporting them. This is with any AAA com company. So why don't buy EA games? In fact, I try to avoid buying games from companies that have people that treat them badly. I draw the line at being lied to. I just, it's, it's, it just, it's just such a shame to, I'm looking through this one as well. They just, they just kept making up reasons. 
you know like, like there's 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 all these things like redo redo models from scratch oh didn't want to include them because balancing for new pokemon new abilities has gone very hard Specific reason, have judged it will be hard for a Pokemon to appear even times going forward. Oh, hardware changes. Adding mechanics over adding more monsters. But yet, why does this affect the animation of the of the models? Just take another bit of time to, to make the models better, you lazy pricks. But then like, higher fidelity and higher quality animations, there's nothing there. But even more than that, it's down to the battle system. Yeah, but like you why bother putting it on the switch then if you can just keep it on the handheld? No, you just wanted to have your cake and eat it too. You didn't want to put any money into graphical development. You just wanted to have like to put it on par with a lot of the other big franchise Nintendo games. You just wanted to have a flashy looking user interface, some pretty looking British towns, and you wanted to have an open world just like all the other big AAA games. Where the trees look like that from like the ocarina of time, yeah. But that, that it, you can say it's been misconstrued. This is this is this is the BS part. That on, on behalf of Polygon, you can say that it's been misconstrued. But they just need an, just one reason. Just give a reason. Keep giving a reason. Don't keep giving different reasons, or else other people will think you're just making stuff up. Oh, of course it did, because these people are trying to understand why Game Freak suddenly decided to just do this stupid crap in the first place. Th what are you talking about? This has got nothing to do with it, it's the fact. Th it does matter, Polygon, because people have been lied to. That's not, it's because they've been lied to, it's not because they eat less Pokemon, it's because they've been treated like idiots. It's, it's, no, it's logical, it's completely logical that people are upset about this because there was no logical reason for Game Freak to lie about this. But wouldn't it be, well, Occam's Razor is that people pulled the animations out of the game. Isn't it just, wouldn't it just be a bit too much effort for someone to just make a model of every single Pokemon and just do it like that? They must have had to get the original animations. Or the original assets. But why would it make sense for Game Freak to cut back? It doesn't make sense because you could just have the ability to put the Pokemon in the games after post-game. Yeah, I get it. Having all 800 Pokemon, or 900 Pokemon, and like, just having all 900 Pokemon in a game would be, would be just a, sh a crap show. It would be horrendously complicated, I get it. But you could still have the ability for people to import their, their, their other 800 Pokemon into the game post. Just give them the ability to go back in time. They have been able to do this since Gold and Silver, on a Game Boy. Yet they cannot do this on a Nintendo Switch. They they had the ability to transfer Pokemon from Red and Blue to to Gold and Silver. This is stupid. It doesn't make sense to cut back at some point, you dumb you dumb sycophants. Yeah, but most fans wanted them to jump to consoles. Game Freak has not been listening to the, to their fans. It doesn't make sense at all. And, and the problem is that, like it says, and while Game Freak has slowly introduced mechanics that appeal more to hardcore fans, like the upcoming ability to change Pokemon nature, you still get the feeling that the games aren't exactly for them. Yeah, so do you want kids to just be given a subpar experience? Is, it, is this what this is? You have, your older fans can buy the games. They can buy the games and they can justify buying more than one copy of the games. And also, don't treat kids like idiots. If kids, kids are far more likely to be emotional about this sort of stuff. Because they're immature. Because they're young. What are you talking about? It's even more exhausting to love video games at all right now. It's not, we're not looking for a reason to be angry. That's victim blaming. Okay, that's, that's ridiculous. If Nintendo, if Game Freak has given people the... It, the, the the reasoning that they have and people find a contradiction it means that what Game Freak have said is not is 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 not correct. Patricia Hernandez. Alright Patricia Hernandez. I, I know that you you just wanna keep Polygon happy and write just stuff that says nothing. 
no, it shouldn't. It's not personal. I'm sure that she meant everything she said. It's just, I wanted to buy this game. I was so excited for this. But Game Freak have treated people like idiots. They have abused the trust of their customers. They had defeated the purpose of their games and their heritage has been ignored. They have not got a big enough studio to handle something like this. Having a mid-tier studio for a series like Pokemon is just ridiculous. And because they haven't wanted to do anything to their organization necessarily, what they have instead done is basically made it... They, they just aren't going to grow. This is just Pokemon for the next 5 to 10 years. What they'll probably do is say in the next game that like you can import Pokemon into the new one as a, hey, buy the new version of Sword and Shield Axe or something like that. But it's just, it's, it's just done, man. I'm just done with this all entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and uh, chill out for a bit. I'm going to upload this video because I think it's, I think it's fine. I don't know, but I need to keep recording and I need to try and learn to articulate myself in videos. So thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you didn't, that's fine too. Um, stay cool. See you later. Bye bye. And uh, let me know whether you're going to get a hold of this game and let me know if it's any good. Thanks.